I am so glad you chose to join me for this um, relatively short, I hope it's a short little video, on how to estimate when we're doing calculations with pH. This is especially important when you're dealing with classes uh, like AP and IB where you have multiple choice and no calculator. So if you go from pH to H3O+, plus, this would be 1 times 10 to the minus 2 molar. So if there are zeros after here, there's a 1 in front, and this 2 links with the power. So the number in front is always related to the power. Now, if we did this next calculation, we get 5.6 times 10 to the minus 3. Um, remember, pH is equal to, uh, uh, excuse me, H3O plus is equal to 10 to the minus pH. That's how I'm getting these numbers. I'm plugging the pH in and uh, taking 10 to the minus that value. This next one is 1.78. I'm not concerned with sig figs right now because I'm trying to make a point about magnitude. And then this would be 1 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay, so estimating guidelines. If there is a 1 in front, it's pretty straightforward. The pH is equal to the negative power. So we've got, in our case, a negative, negative 2. So the pH would be equal to 2. And that's the case right here. So if there's a 1 in front, it's, it's pretty straightforward. You should be able to not even estimate. You should be able to know, that, be able to determine um, the H plus from that or the pH um, if there's a 1 in, in front. Where we run into problems is when there's not a 1 in front. Now, it will help you to bear in mind that as we increase our H3O concentration, H3O plus concentration, we decrease pH. So those are inversely proportional to one another. So if I want to estimate this time, so now what we're going to do, our estimating guideline, is you look at the power. So look at your power. pH you're going to drop the negative. Let me, I'm going to try to make this a little clearer, clearer rules here. So we're going to look to the power. We're going to drop the negative and go down by one. So in this case, I have a 3 here. If I drop the negative and go down by 1, I have 2 point something. So you could estimate that your pH is 2 point something. That might be as close as you get. That might be all you need. Um, this next one, you've got to the negative 3. Again, that one is also drop the power, go down by 1. So the number in front of your pH is related to the power. And if there's a number in front, you go down by one. Okay, so for those, both of those, you'd estimate as two point something. Well, take a look at this. Here I am increasing pH. So do you notice as I go between these numbers that I have a decrease? Those powers decrease as pH increases. So if you have to compare, two numbers that are this close, you'd get the two by looking at the power, and then you would have to compare this. So if we are increasing pH value here, um, we must be decreasing our H3O+. So that's the gist of it. Let me just do one more example. If we had 4.3 times 10 to the minus 8, our pH is going to be 7 point some value. And that will be enough. You won't have to get exact numbers for the multiple choice. This will get you the ballpark you need. 
this has applications as well when we are talking about KAs and KBs, right? Because it's quite common to report values as PKA minus the log of the KA or PKB minus the log of the KB. So if my KA value is 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth, I know my PKA is equal to four point some value. So hang on to that thought because these are very, this is a very important non-calculator math skill that will help us when you're trying to choose, say, indicators at an equivalence point. Right, so hang on to that and I hope that helps. Good luck and thanks for joining me on your journey of chemistry.